The problem starts at the top. Out of 268 admirals in the U.S. Navy, only 10 are African American. Most of them are rear admirals like Alvin Halsey, who is running the Navy task force. Really, someone's got to look out and see where, who is he? Uh, where is he coming from? How can he fit in? Right now, there are no African American admirals at the two highest ranks. Building an admiral is a 20 to 30 year commitment, Halsey says. It's not just about test scores and performance reviews. Someone has to be willing to guide that young officer. As a black officer in the Navy, I'll tell you that I've mentored more people to that don't look like me, that look like me, sure about sure mathematics, right? Uh, but I will tell you also, because there's very few guys who've come before me in, in, in small numbers, uh, someone who don't look like me had to reach out and engage and make a difference in my career. African Americans are 13% of the population, but only 9% of naval officers. So the pipeline starts off small. Then somewhere along the way, many people just become exhausted, says Keith Green, a lieutenant commander who retired in the 1990s. He recently wrote the book, Black Officer, White Navy. It is not simply just unconscious bias. There are active behaviors that are happening to people because someone doesn't, they don't like working for a black person or a minority. They don't like work with one, uh, work with one. And they don't like having, you know, one be their, uh, their uh, supervisor. Not everyone an African-American officer encounters is a problem, Green says. But the extra effort to work around those who are takes its toll on their career. Not only do you have to do all the other stressful things that any military person has to do, you have to play that double game of trying to figure out why you're being treated differently or what's happening to you, why is something happening to you that isn't happening to other people. Retired Rear Admiral Sinclair Harris heads the National Naval Officers Association, which has worked for 50 years to promote diversity in the sea services. He says it takes hundreds of ensigns to eventually make one admiral, or what the Navy calls flag officers. You've got to bring more people in in the beginning so that the quality cut that you're going to have especially when you get to senior officer and you get to flag officer, you have enough people in the pot. He calls it Death Valley, that point where junior officers opt to end their careers. Graduating from the Naval Academy is the most well-worn path to admiral, but less than 6% of the current class at the Naval Academy is African American. The Academy is not the only path. Admiral Harris was rejected when he applied at the beginning of his career. Harris says one solution is mentoring officers who come through less traditional paths. When you only have one out of 20 uh, diverse candidates going up for a flag officer in a certain community and they decide, hey, you know what, I just got this high paying job at IBM or hey, my, my wife is sick of me being gone to sea and my husband is sick of me being gone to sea. Guess what? Now you're down to zero and you got to look through that pipeline and that pipeline is anemic. The Navy is more diverse at lower ranks. 20% of enlisted sailors are African American. Force Master Chief Huben Phillips is part of the One Navy Task Force, which is looking at how to end discrimination in the ranks. And I would tell you uh, throughout my 31 years uh, where I've seen uh, racism or discrimination personally against me, uh, I knew what the policy was, right? I knew that it was wrong. I knew that it was just uh, overt and out there. Uh, but when you're in a minority, you just kind of put your head down, right? You kind of figure out, you think about self-preservation, you think about your family, you think about the bigger picture. At the moment, the Navy is encouraging enlisted and officers alike to speak up. One Navy task force is scheduled to issue its report in December. Steve Walsh, KPBS News.